watching HBCU Go Sports College Basketball. We're in Mobile, Alabama at the Arthur Outlaw Recreational Center. It's Green Hill College taking on Clark Atlanta University. Hello, family. I'm James Adnan. With me is the former Alabama State Hornet, Nia Simone. And Nia, both of these teams early on in conference play still trying to find themselves. Yeah, James. Uh, both coaches shared with us at the beginning of the week about how these teams are both trying to find their identity. But let's get into Clark Atlanta. Number one, Coriana Evans has been outstanding for the Panthers. She has uh, currently averaging 16 points per game. She sits number four in the conference for scoring. And she has a nice mid-range game, James. She's a true athlete and she can stretch the floor. As for our home team, the Spring Hill Badgers, number 12, Marta Duda. She has been the engine behind this team's offense. Right now, she's averaging 14.6 points per game. She's number six in the SIAC for scoring, and she was recently named SIAC Newcomer of the Week. Coach Pressel says she has a super high motor. She's a hard worker and understands the grind. But when you think about both of these players, they're going to be going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They play the same position, so you can expect a battle tonight down low. The matchup is next this afternoon. Spring Hill College and Clark Atlanta. Welcome back to Mobile, Alabama. Here are the starting lineups for both teams, starting with Clark Atlanta. We've already mentioned Coriana Evans, but Nia Adriana Gardner, just a freshman, but she's been scoring with the best of them. Oh, yeah, James. She stepped up big during their loss against Clayton State. She had 18 points. Coach says she plays big for the Panthers. And for Spring Hill, they also have a freshman sensation, Kellen Hunter. She might be a better soccer player than she is back but her footwork is working out in both situations. <laughs> See what you did there, James. Yeah, she's a passionate athlete, and she's a well-seasoned player, that's what Coach said. She's the second leading scorer for this squad, and she shows up just as big. Well, for more on both teams, we go down to the third member of our team, Cy Alexander. Yes, guys, we have two contrasting styles today. Clark being super, super athletic, and Spring Hill is very, very scrappy. Let's see which style wins out. As you guys said earlier, both teams are still trying to find themselves. We should have a good one today. When you think about Spring Hill, we talked with Coach Dan Pressel, and he mentioned how this is his first year, and he's enjoying the opportunity to lead these young ladies. Still feels like they're very disciplined, knows that that's going to help them, and know if they can really push themselves against this team, then they put themselves in a great position to be successful. Yeah, James, we had a chance to go to shoot around last night, and I mean, you could hear a pin drop in the gym. The team was so locked in, they were so focused, and it's a very disciplined team. And here are what the SIAC standings look like right now. You think about um, a Benedict College team that has played at a high level, and the Clark Atlanta team as well that has really played at a high level coming into this game. They came off that loss to Clayton State last time out. And when you think about what Clark wants to do in this game, uh, they just they really don't want to have the same type of showing that they had last time in this game versus Spring Hill. Sure, James. And yeah, Coach talks about consistency. That's what he needs from his team. He would like for people to see a full game played from his squad. For Coach Tony Bailey. And for Spring Hill College, Samantha Hardison. She may not be in the starting lineup, but she has enough juice. She's, she's ready to go as we get ready for the tip. Clark Atlanta coming in three on the year. And for Spring Hill College coming in at one and four overall. We see Marta Duda there from Torrance, Poland. Has played at two different colleges before coming here. And she's going to be the catalyst on offense. On the flip side, Trendy Jones, a shooter that can really fill it up herself. Just moments away from getting started. I think there's a bit of an issue before tip. Just trying to get everything right clerically. 
our officials on the day. Alicia Lynch, Jalen Carter, and Eddie Gray. And right now, having an issue with the scoreboard. And so that is what is taking a little bit of time. And <laughs> You know, and the Badgers, they are on the bench fired up. You know, when we came into practice, like I said, you could hear a pin drop in here. But as soon as Coach Ferguson walked in, it was, she was just hyping up her team. You never saw these players not hyping each other up and cheering each other on as they transition between each drill. And for Clark Atlanta, we were at their shoot around as well. A really light practice for Coach Bailey. And his team is really putting themselves in a position if they can kind of put it all together to be successful in this league. Now we have the tip, Coriana Evans wins it, and we're off between Clark Atlanta and Spring Hill College. Coriana Evans can't grab it, the ball's taken away by Tiana Smith. And right there early on, the defense, the scrappiness yeah. for Spring Hill. Very scrappy team, and Smith was able to read that pass and be able to get that steal. Kellen Hunter, the freshman, played at Faith Academy last season. First team foul on Clark Atlanta. Here's Coach Dan Prussell. He mentioned he's in his first season. The former assistant at South Alabama, so he knows this area well. Getting his first chance to lead a program. It's Carrito, ripping through, looking for Duda. She's blocked off. Now, Brunson forces the turnover. So we talked about a freshman in H round of Gardner, but Jakia Brunson, she's in the starting lineup for a reason. Oh yeah, Jakia Brunson has been outstanding for Clark Atlanta so far this season. And not to mention, James, she was actually the all-time leading scorer in her former high school in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And so you see there were some necessarily flooding but they're in the roof the water has come through a lot of rain today already and so the floor has some moisture on it and so we might see this throughout the game just wanted to keep the young ladies and young men we'll see a little bit later safe as there was a little bit of a leak in the roof strong drive first points of the game go to Trinity Jones and Trinity Jones she played big against Clayton State during their loss, she had 16 points. She averages about 11 points per game. Smith lines it up. Yes, ma'am. Tiana Smith scores the first points for Spring Hill College. They lead by one early on. Jensen Clark coming off their loss. Coach Bailey wanted to seem to stay locked in throughout their practices this week said that they were and really wants his team to play at a high level another opportunity this one is offline rebound by Gardner extra pass to Evans she's blocked from behind but fouled by Tiana Smith you know that was a great sequence by Clark Atlanta staying active on those boards as you can see Atriana Gardner she was able to get that rebound and make that extra pass down to Coriana Evans and now Evans is at the line Oriana Evans transferred from Eastern Kentucky University. And Coach Bailey says that she continues to play at the level she has throughout her time at yeah. Clark. She'll have a chance to play at the next level past high school or past college. Absolutely, James. And you know, Coach says she can actually play two through five positions. As I said earlier, she can stretch the floor. Coach says she can pull out, shoot the three. Uh, she hasn't had the opportunity to do that, but hopefully we'll see more of that this season from her. The two from the line does Evans. See this press. Coach Russell knew that Clark was going to try to heat them up a bit. Both times his team has seen it. They've got through. Garrido, the floater, balls. And the Badgers are such an unselfish team, James. They've been able to move the ball and make sure they get the best shots they can get before taking the shot. University of Texas, Tyler. Brunson misfires. 
Soft touch from Marta Duda. We talked about her ability in the post, and she looked very calm down there. Very calm. Sweet, smooth, kisses it off. Stein kicks out. Jones, yes. Jones, couple of buckets. Tough Jones, so tough shot by Jones, I should say. She was able to get in, it was some traffic, but she was able to knock down that key shot. Nowhere to go for Hunter, and maybe a bit of room service for Stein. Wow, rather than take the layup, takes the foul as Garrido goes over the top. Stein saw her coming down, and she just did that stop, wanted to be a bit patient. Numbers, of course, and then of course you see Claudia Garudo kind of steps over, glad she was able to get up and get back to it. Hunter and Nelson come out, Nicole Blanche comes in along with Jalisha Mann. Another strong drive, can't score it. Oriana Evans had an offensive rebound. She missed out, and a foul, a loose ball on Clark Atlanta. So two bites out the apple down low, but couldn't find the bottom of the basket. And that just one shows that their aggressiveness on the glass, but also Springfield not giving up in the end. Sure. And Evans is actually number 16 right now in the league for rebounding. She's been rebounding big for the Panthers this year. Take the screen out to Dorito. And Clark Atlanta and in the pocket. Dorito, smooth little move to get into the lane, but no sauce at the end. Gardner with a great catch and kisses it off the glass. Way to push that ball by McKinley to be able to see Gardner as she was driving up and getting back. is broken. Smith, excellent look. She has two from that same spot. Tiana Smith, two for two from three. Unselfish play by the Badger. Smith is actually, she was named Spring Hill College Freshman Athlete of the Year last year, and she shows up big when she needs to for the Badger. And it's been back and forth early. We've already had five lead changes. Oriana Evans, Slithers into the lane and scores. So smooth. Have, your say, have yourself a day, Miss Evans. Have yourself a day. That is what I mean, that she shows up big. She has that athletic built. She can play all positions if she needs to. Duda steps out. Up and down. Back and forth we go. Runs in. Almost loses possession. Evans. No. Coach Bailey says she does have the ability to shoot from out there. Nicole Blanche. She's not kicks afraid out. to. Oh! What a, well done by Blanche. Gets the defender up and the extra pass to Duda for the bucket. Absolutely. And Evan just going to have to stay on her feet. has the mismatch, doesn't get it on the high-low. Jones finds Evans, another strong move, and so easy for Coriana Evans once she gets it on the block. And you know, Clark Atlanta, they have really good depth over the Badgers, so they can use that to their full advantage throughout today's matchup.
Ball's out of bounds. It'll be baseline out of bounds for Springfield when we return. But Tiana Smith twice has tickled the twine. First one looks good. Second one looks better. But we're tied at 12 apiece. Coriana Evans was preseason all SIAC for a reason, already scoring at a high clip. Yeah, James, and again, of course, I told you she has that athletic build. What's going to be Clark Atlanta's advantage is her depth, being able to play all positions, being able to shoot, and of course, get in the paint and get physical. And Coach Bailey said that she's going to have a chance to play at the next level past college. She's already showcased her ability in this game. Nicole Blanche showcases her ability to shoot from long range. And Springfield College takes a three-point lead early the middle portion of this first quarter. Definitely push that the team has got to take care of the ball. Obviously, um, Clark Atlanta, they love that full court press trap, so they're going to have to really take care of the ball today. away to the basket. Brooklyn McKinley, Lake Ridge graduate from Mansfield, Texas. Yeah, McKinley, that was a great, great sequence by her being able to pass and cut. Pass and cut. Duda, a little space, and that soft touch again falls for Martha Duda. Duda with a silky smooth roll and pitching it off the rim. Gardner tries to put Duda in the spin cycle, but she's denied. McKinley lines it up. Yes, ma'am. So both of these teams shooting at a high clip, and the scoreboard is lighting up here early in the first quarter. She's not happy about that play, but she definitely stepped on the line. But McKinley with back-to-back -back threes. McKinley, a freshman out of Texas. She has been a light for this Clark Atlanta team so far. Eight points off the bench for Brooklyn McKinley. And Clark Atlanta opening up a bit of a lead here. Hunter turns it over. Four on three for the Panthers. White slices through. And she's fouled by Nicole Black. James, she's been the next factor so far. Not that sleeper player. Coming out, she has a lot of energy. She's quick and she's making her cuts and her sets and she's knocked it down. Anna White. In this last game, she's injury. And she had a thigh contusion as well. An ankle injury. Happy for her to be back on the court. Make her first free throw. Yeah, Hannah White is a grad student for Clark Atlanta, and, you know, Coach was telling us that she is the vocal leader on this team, you know. She's that seasoned vet on this team, and she's able to get her team in order when need be. Two free throws from her. That's 75%. Clark Atlanta. 
Park, Atlanta with another steal. White, no. After the second is hit from McKinley, call short. Springfield looks to run. Samantha Hardison goes to the left, and she's fouled. She'll shoot two. Hunter sees Hannah right here on this outlet, and of course, she to knock it down, but Samantha Hardison has a chance to shoot for two. First foul on Peyton Land. Hardison has put in free throw. Hardison is very, very active around campus. She's an entrepreneurship and psychology major. Um, she's a part of the Badger Connection Guide, which is a program that helps new students transfer into Spring Hill College. Goes one for two from the line. And Jaleesha Mann almost intercepts the pass, but couldn't catch it. Did it one better. Threw it off the Clark Atlanta player. And Spring Hill back on offense. And that was a great defensive play by Mann. She was able to read that pass and, of course, gather herself to hit it off a of Clark Atlanta player and get back possession of the ball. Nelson. Wonderful look, but Jordan Bowden could not bring it in. The ball rolls out for another turnover. So there have been crisp aspects to this first quarter, but also getting a little not as crisp for Spring Hill. They've been turning the ball over at the last little possession. Absolutely, and that was what Coach Russell was talking to us about, of taking care of the ball. Obviously, this is a very unselfish team. They're making good passes. They just got to finish at the board. Evans was doubled. So she threw it up because of the double. Opened up the offensive glass. And Faith Land got the rebound. She's fouled. She'll shoot two free throws. That's the fourth team foul. Here with 41 seconds left in this first quarter. They land on the year. Shoots it at 50%. This is just her seventh and eighth free throws of this young season. There's one for two on this trip. Atlanta and that full court trap. Coach said they played their best when they're in that full court trap. Badgers beat the press. Clock clock and game clock did for by about nine seconds. Hunter lets it fly, gets her own rebound. Man tries for three. Her shot is short. Jordan Bowden ends up with it on the third attempt. And that scrappiness for Spring Hill. Land, the three to shoot. Has it blocked by Hardison. And Evans can't get it up in time. And so Clark Atlanta leads as we go to the second quarter. Brooklyn McKinley has been dialed in from this entire first quarter. Two threes for her and Clark Atlanta in front. Clark Atlanta in front of Spring Hill College after the first quarter. And for more on the first quarter for both teams. Alexander. During that last timeout at the end of the quarter, Coach Bailey was much more pleased with their defensive effort as far as Clark Atlanta was. He did not feel they were applying enough pressure the first five minutes of the quarter, but he thought the reason they took the lead was because their defensive intensity improved over the last five minutes. He wants them to keep that up and keep sharing the basketball. And yet it felt like that. It felt like in the first half of the first quarter, Spring Hill got the ball up the floor, could do what they wanted to do. But when that pressure picked up for Clark Atlanta, that's when they started to turn them over more, and that's when they pushed out to the lead. 
Absolutely. And you know, obviously Clark Atlanta has been taking advantage again of their depth and playing that full court trap, putting the pressure on them on defense as we can see right here. McKinley right to the rack. And Brooklyn McKinley now has 10 points. First player in double figures for either team. Kelly has been stepping up big. This is what coaches mean by when your number is called, take advantage. This is a true freshman right here we're seeing, guys. Two freshmen on the wall right now for Spring Hill. Kellen Hunter, the Faith Academy, played both soccer and basketball. A lot of pressure right now put on by Clark Atlanta. Spring Hill having to deal with it. Late shot clock. Nelson gets it up and puts it in. That was a tough shot by Nelson. Coach Presley said Yolanda Nelson made some senior-like plays down the stretch earlier this year. She's one of the only returners for this first-year team in Coach Presley in his first season. She needs plays like that down the stretch in this game. Nelson back on the ball after the miss by Clark Atlanta. Early post up to Marta Duda. When you get it down low, got to handle business, and Duda does. Duda had that size advantage over Garner, and of course, as you can see, she was able to knock it in. The Badgers can just check her out and just be able to feed her in the post. Money. Denise Stein smartly let it go after she was blocked so she could get it back and score the bucket. Back and forth we go between Spring Hill. That's Kellen Hunter, OMG. To the smooth crossover, slipped it to Duda. Foul, have to see if it was on the floor, or if it will be a, half the shot. And Here again, James, again, this is an unselfish team. Way for Hunter to make that extra pass down to Duda. So they're calling it on the block. That's on Faith Land, her second. And so it's not on the shot. It's before the shot, so therefore, Duda does not have an opportunity to shoot. I think there's a conversation right now between the official scorebook and what's on the scoreboard right now. You know, James, um, earlier this week uh, when we spoke with Coach Bailey, he shared with us a bit about the passing of his younger sister who passed away um, October 4th. But, you know, Coach says that he can always feel her presence. She was very vocal. He trusted in her voice uh, when it came to talking about his girls. So um, Coach Bailey has, you know, been a light, obviously, in keeping things up for his sister's legacy. He talks to her very often, all the time, always can feel her presence. As Hunter goes to the rack, drops it off to Duda. Excellent footwork and another bucket for Marta Duda. She shows why she's been so successful and why she's the SIAC Player of the Week this week. And that was a textbook move by Duda. Very sound, up and under, and kisses it in. And there she is, she's active, she's getting down on D, she shoots it. She hustles back and, of course, got that great defensive play. Duda, five for six, ten points on the day. Clark Atlanta back on offense. Brunson. Strong. First time we see Janiah Ellis after the offensive rebound. Ellis, transfer from University of Louisiana, Monroe. Jones to Brunson. Extra pass to McKinley. Somebody's got to shoot. It's Ellis. Short. Now on the run out. Smith. Yes. Hunter over the top to Tiana Smith for two. Hunter has great court vision. That was a great push pass up to Smith. Eight points for Tiana Smith after two three pointers in the first quarter. Jones blocked by Tiana Smith. Spring Hill College now running. That's just great ball movement here by the Badgers. They're patient. They're setting themselves up for, to take the best shot they can take. Late shot clock now. Spacing out for Duda. 
And if it's up on the rim, it's going in right now for Marta Duda. 12 points for the Torin Poland native. And Duda is showing why she is the lead scorer for the squad. Last year averaged a point per game at Arkansas Tech. Shot is short from Brunson. Kellen Hunter with the rebound. And also, as a freshman, Kellen Hunter has really started to run this offense. She's taken control of things as a point guard. Tries to do it on her own. And she's not afraid to get the lane. She might be the smallest on the floor, but she is sure mighty. Myra Harris was out of bounds when she touched the basketball. So we have some substitutes coming in for both teams. Coriana Evans will come back into the game along with Anna White and Deasia Reed. Nicole Blanche joins the game for Spring Hill College. White, nice look, a little long, and Garrido coming the other way. You know, James, the Panthers just have to take their time on offense. It seems a bit that they're rushing shots. Take your time, run your sets, and get the best shot off. Spring Hill will have the ball out of bounds. Zamara Harris comes out along with Tiana Smith. Coming in, Samantha Hardison and Jalisha Mann. And for those watching at home, if the scoreboard is changing a bit with no scoring, it's because there are discrepancies between the score and the official scorebook. And what's in the stadium between the different teams. So we'll make sure we get that corrected for you. Excellent cross-court pass. Jakia Brunson just can't find the bottom. In the stands right now, it's a three-point game. Hardison runs right through Hannah White, and she gets up with a smile after forcing the offensive foul. Yeah, Hardison just was not looking up. She kind of had her head down. She put out her elbow, and of course, that's going to be a charge. Second foul on her, first foul in this quarter for Spring Hill. is a proud Arabian Mountain grad, home of the Rams, my alma mater, my there we go, former there we high go. school. <laughs> got to show love, got to show love. And with that kickball by Garrido, we'll take a break. Everything has been so close. Marta Duda has been a seven straight game in double figures for her. We'll be back for more when we return. Springfield College down right now to Clark Atlanta, but Marta Duda is just another day at the office, another game in double figures. Yeah, James, she's been able to use her long body to advantage, and of course, she's just a disciplined and sound player. Clark Atlanta on offense. McKinley in double figures as well. Finds Reed, excellent post move as she pumps, then puts it in for two. Well, she faked me out too. <laughs> Clark Atlanta back in this pressing defense. They have turned over Spring Hill at a high clip in this game. And they lead by five. Badgers deal with the pressure. Mann goes right to the rack. Jaleesha Mann with two. That was an excellent play by Jaleesha Mann being able to use her speed to her advantage and get the lane and knock down that layup. So that's the third foul on Samantha Hardison. Team foul for Spring Hill in the second quarter. The Badgers having to find a way to slow down Coriana Evans, sixth in the conference in scoring this season. She has six on the day. Reed gets it again, spins back, and so smooth for DeAsia Reed. Back-to-back -back buckets since coming in. Oh, yeah, Deasia Reed being able to use her body to her advantage over Marta Duda's long, lengthy body. Duda trying to go right back at her. But she's blocked away. On the fast break, Reed wants it on the block. She'll get it. It's tipped away by Nicole Blanche. And you know what? I appreciate the effort by the Panthers 
for trying to feed Reed. She's hot. Get her in. She knows she has that advantage over Duda. Evans and Pruitt go out. Woody Jones and Adriana Gardner come back in. to Reed, not shy. Had a bit of a, bit of a heat check there. As HBCU Go delivers the best black college sports right to your home or mobile device. Go to hbcugo.tv or download the TV app on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire for the full HBCU Go experience. Clark Atlanta leads by five on top of Spring Hill College. And just trying to force Eve Marta to do that, but Asia Reed has come in and shut all of that down defensively. Back on offense is Reed. Fading, shooting, and scoring again. She said, when I come in, I come in to get buckets. <laughs> That's right, again, hey, when your number is called, you get out there and you show the reason why your number is called. Asia Reed has been a light six points so far. Jaleesha Mann right back at you. She said, count that. Again, she's using her speed to her advantage. Just take a look as she is going in strong. She's not afraid of that contact. And of course, she's able to get that and one. Second team foul. Clark Atlanta. Marks the second foul on Trinity Jones today. Alicia Mann going to the line for the old fashioned three point play. The junior from Decatur, Georgia. My hometown, Decatur, where it is always greater. Oh, <laughs> and she's six for six on the season from the free throw line after that. Make four point game. Eight in the second quarter. Reed swatted away by Tiana Smith. And that was a great defensive play by Smith coming over and sagging over. And of course, getting that open pocket. And Duda showing us why, again, she is the SIAC newcomer of the week. 14 points for Marta Duda looking for an extra one. The huge block by Smith. Of course, Hunter with that extra pass, seeing the floor. And Duda says, count it, give me my extra point. 15 first half points for Marcia Duda. Now Spring Hill in a bit of a press. Man, 4-3. Can't bank it in. And Brooklyn McKinley wants to go on her own. McKinley right to the rack. Cleaned up by Marcia Duda. And Clark Atlanta with the foul. And you know, that was, that was a great push by McKinley, but again, you have to remember, numbers, numbers. There wasn't just enough red, you gotta have your head up, but of course, Duda was there to spot that ball. She said, not in my house, Dave. The energy has ratcheted up for Spring Hill College. And they have made this a one-point game as they line things down in the second quarter. And you know, the Badgers had to match the Panthers aggressiveness on defense. I think that has really pushed them up to get their confidence going and the momentum going. Smith with six to shoot. Now Yolanda Nelson. The floater is pure. And Spring Hill College takes the lead on top of Clark Atlanta. Showing up big on both sides of the floor. The Panthers, they just got to calm down, set up their plays, make those extra passes to one another. When you think about Anna White, she found some space, but it was closed down quickly by Tiana Smith. Two blocks here in this second quarter. And she's really helped Spring Hill on defense. McKinley. Takes the screen. The Badgers on that. Gardner, no. 
and an excellent opportunity ball for Sinai Tyler. And that was a great cleanup by Tyler. You know, Clark Atlanta, they just been a bit short under the basket, but way to get in there and get that rebound. First field goal of the day for Sinai Tyler. Clark Atlanta back in front. Hunter finds some space and scores. And that defensive breakdown by the Panthers. Someone on that help side forgot to sag down and get in and get in the paint. Shot clock and game clock differ by about four seconds. White slips into the lane, short, ball pinballs around. Hunter has it and can calmly bring it across the timeline for the final shot. What an effort from Spring Hill College to take in this first half. Kellen Hunter, yes, ma'am. Spring Hill College with the lead on top of Clark Atlanta, and Marta Duda has had her fingerprints all over this first half. 15 for the transfer from Arkansas Tech, and the Badgers in front of the Panthers. So Clark Atlanta have to figure things out in this second half, but with the man who's in front, Cy Alexander, Coach. with Coach Presley. Coach, great energy. The team fought back. What did you say to him to give him that spark? Man, I, it's all them, man. I said nothing, man. We got a group of great kids. Uh, man, they've done everything we've asked them since we got here. Uh, bought in. Man, it's all them. Hunter and Duda were outstanding. Tell me about it. They've been great for us all year. Uh, Marta just really super. And you can depend on her and you can depend on Kellen every day. You know, when you're a freshman point guard, it's tough, man. It's tough. You got to learn on the job a lot of times. And you know what? You just got to keep going, learn from it, and keep going. That's what she's been doing. Your message at halftime. Uh, keep going. This is a really good Clark team. They're coming out with a response. We got to make sure we have our appropriate one. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Well, the defense was ratcheted up as well. Seven blocks for Spring Hill in that First half, the defense then turned into offense for the Badgers as they lead. We'll have halftime next here on HBCU Go. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Exciting first half from Mobile, Alabama, between Clark Atlanta and Spring Hill. Hi, everyone. Welcome into our Atlanta studio. Each week, we contact our panel of experts to come up with our top ten polls, and here it is. Welcome to the HBCU GO Top 10 Countdown. Starting at number 10, we have Virginia Union with a 4-1 record. At number 9, it's Miles with a 3-1 record. They boast one of the SIAC's best offenses, averaging almost 80 points per game. Taking the 8th spot, Lemoyne Owen stands tall at 5-2. Seventh on the list, Grambling sits at 3-3. Three Fayetteville State secures the sixth position with a 5-1 record. They've been dominating the boards, leading the CIAA and rebounding. Maryland Eastern Shore claims the fifth spot with a 4-3 record. Virginia State is undefeated at 6-0, securing the fourth place. They lead the CIAA in scoring. Bethune-Cookman lands at third with a 4-2 record. Norfolk State, the best defensive team in the conference, nags the second spot with a 6-2 and two record. And at the top spot, it's Jackson State at 5-1. and one. They travel to take on Kansas State later this evening. That concludes our HBCU GO Top 10 Countdown. Our big story this week continues to be Diamond Johnson. Diamond transferred to Norfolk State thinking she would be able to play immediately, but the Spartans are still waiting transfer to be eligible a frustrating situation for diamond 
and her coach, Larry Vickers. For Diamond's case, she's now with the NCAA Legislative Committee. We're going to prevent every day from NC State get NC State support as well as put her statements out there. Sometimes it's hard to prove uh, mental health or some other things that happened at the last school. So the NCAA has been patient with us and working with us. We're going to have more of our interview with Coach Vickers in our crossover show between games. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll look at some NCAA volleyball results. So stay with us. Welcome back to our halftime studio. The Jackson State women's volleyball team won the SWAC tournament last weekend and took on the number one overall seed Wisconsin on Thursday in the NCAA tournament. Now, number one Wisconsin came out on top three sets to zero, defeating Jackson State. And Coppin State's women's volleyball team took on Pittsburgh last night in the NCAAs. Coppin State fell to Pittsburgh three sets to zero as well. We'll be back with more of our halftime after this. Lead, it's deep within. It's in your head and your heart. Leaders are developed from experiences, shared knowledge from guidance and lessons learned. Leaders are developed at Clark Atlantic University world-class education with support every step of the way ready to lead and positively impact the world visit clark atlanta university today on campus or online clark atlanta university where scholars learn and lead marta duda has had the hot hand in the first half for spring hill 15 points on seven for nine shooting and she's been doing her damage in the paint a layup right here from Marta, continuing to extend that lead for Spring Hill as they lead Clark Atlanta 41 to 37. That's all for us here at halftime. We'll get you back out to Mobile for the second half. So long from our studio. This is the way down a path that leads to a place upon the hill, led by thought leader activist and Jesuit principal. Among the hill is where tradition and the strong desire to do and achieve reside. Ingrained in rich tradition, filled with purpose, fueled by passion. Spring Hill College is for those who seek more. Welcome back to Mobile, Alabama, Spring Hill College in front of Clark Atlanta here in the SIAC. I'm James Hatton. Out with me is Nia Simone. And Nia, that first half, 12 lead changes, a fast and furious first half. Excited for the second half. Yeah, and you know, Coach Russell talked with us about his team trying to find their flow and rhythm. And we saw that towards the last four to five minutes of that second quarter where, you know, the Badgers, they got their flow. And I think they figured it out. The momentum changed tremendously. Yeah, Kellen Hunter was fantastic because not only did she score late in that first half, but she ran the offense well when Clark Atlanta started to heat them up. Yeah, Hunter is not afraid to get into the paint, use her, her speed advantage. And, of course, she has been the floor general for this Badger squad. And for Clark Atlanta, they're going to have to figure things out. Coriana Evans, she had just six points in the first half. Gardner, who's one of their leading scorers as well, she only had the two, and so they're going to have to find a way to get her into the fold offensively. Yeah, I agree, James. And, of course, you know, we were talking about this in the first half of, you know, Clark Atlanta, they have to run their sets. They have to stay true to their offense and run the play and just set it up. Don't play selfish ball. See a different change in momentum for the Panthers coming back into the second half. 
Right out of the shoot, Adriana Gardner for two. Clark Atlanta continues this pressing defense. Now we'll get back into a man-to-man. -man. Nelson on the ball for Spring Hill. A couple of buckets in the first half, and Spring Hill College found their footing. Looking for another conference win. They're currently one and one in the SIAC. Smith for three. It's two for two in the first half. Can't knock in her first in the second half. The Badgers have to get in and crash the board. It's just two in there by herself trying to rebound. Everyone has to get in and move the ball. Gardner starting to fill things up. Talked about how she was quiet in the first half. Now has back-to-back -back field goals here in the second. Yeah, she's finding her groove, and of course, Park Atlanta gets that ball back. And now down for more on what Coach Bailey needed to see. Cy Alexander. Yes, coming out of this halftime, Coach Bailey felt like they had to push Marta Duda off the block. She was getting her spot too easily. And secondly, they want to try to get Corey Evans going. She's feeling a little bit under the weather. I'll take a quick break and be back after back-to-back -back buckets by Adriana Gardner. Spring Hill trying to figure things out here early in the third quarter. Spring Hill College is the lone college in the SIAC that is not an HBCU, and some might wonder why that is. Well, here is an interesting tidbit. In a letter from Birmingham Jail, you can see, I commend you, Reverend Stallings, for your Christian stance this past Sunday. And later in the letter, Dr. King mentions Spring Hill College and the importance of the leaders in the movement. And we talked with Coach Craig Kennedy, who's the head coach of the men's team, and he said that this instance, this portion of the letter, kind of led the way on how Spring Hill College came into the SIAC. And so there are connections to the civil rights movement with Spring Hill College and why they're in the SIAC comes from that. So it's just such an amazing piece of history just to be here and also for this college to be a part of this great league in the SIAC. Absolutely, James. Beautifully said. That ball is out of bounds off of Clark Atlanta. Spring Hill College will take over in possession. Right now, we're tied at 41 apiece. There have been some conversations between the official scorebook and the scorebooks for the different teams, and so we'll make sure we get that squared away for you. But as it stands, Clark Atlanta and Spring Hill knotted up 41 all. Almost a steal by Denise Stein, but she tipped it out of bounds, so the Badgers in possession. Clark Atlanta in that full court man, putting the pressure on the Badgers. Claudia Garrido breaks the press. Spring Hill in possession right now. Kellen Hunter on the ball, had five first half points, but really controlled the offense. Yolanda Nelson too strong on her jumper. to take the lead back after being down by four at the half. Trinity Jones, no dice at the rim. And that was a beautiful take by Jones. As they say, you have that million dollar move with that 10 six finish. Well, that's three for Claudia Garrido. And Spring Hill back in front. Claudia Garrido out of Spain. She's the coach's kid. Her coach is, her father is also a big time coach over in Spain. Fifth three pointer of the day for Spring Hill College. They average just less than five. As Denise Stein right back at you from long range. She now has five points. She's now at 14 lead changes. And we're early in the third quarter, so please buckle in. Steal by Adriana Gardner, four on two. McKinley takes contact, scores, and Coach Bailey is furious, wondering where the call is. But McKinley now has 12 points. And that was a great, great sequence by the Panthers. Duda steps on the sideline. And again, you know, obviously, Burrito, Hunter getting that extra pass and passing it down. But then Clark Atlanta says, no, no, no. As they step in, they get active on T. Passing it up. And of course, McKinley knocking it down with the contact. 
Park Atlanta in front by two. Hannah White. Where to go? She'll reset. Ten to shoot. Evans steps out. Wide left. And Coriana Evans, despite missing that three, coach believes in her, wants her to shoot that shot. She leads this team in scoring, so she will have that opportunity, and you can expect for that to fly later on in the game as well. Absolutely, and even in that standpoint, you know, obviously the Badgers gave her some room to take that shot, but, you know, she could put that ball on the floor and get inside of the paint and get a closer shot. Nelson stripped the ball through the legs of Evans. Duda slithers pass, and Evans finishes off the possession with a strong defensive board. Jones going the other way. Now Hannah White, no. Gets her own rebound, then throws it away. Kellen Hunter past everyone, and she'll lay it in. Again, you know, we talk about the Badgers being a very scrappy team. Kellen was able to get in and get that steal and take it down to the other end. More contact, no foul, as Evans misses at the rim. But that's how this game is going to be called. Players have to adjust. We'll see how it affects the game moving forward. And this has been a very physical game on both sides of the floor. Sometimes players are looking to the refs to get those extra calls, but you gotta keep playing until you hear that whistle being blown. First foul on the day for Deanna McKinney. First team foul in the third quarter for Park Atlanta. Blanche finds Duda, slips right in, and she's fouled going up. Second team foul upcoming. Goes on Atriana Gardner, so that is a important foul for her. Would have found that that open pocket in the middle to get get in and get that short jumper. Duda knew she had that size advantage over those two Park Atlanta Panther players, but one thing I want her to do is just keep the ball up while she's in the lane. Don't break the ball down. 16 points for Marta Duda. She continues this excellent pace to start the season. Double figures in every game this year. Faith Bland hit from behind by Samantha Hardison. That's her fourth. Let's just check it out. Faith Bland kind of gets in there. And uh, Kellen Hunter and <laughs> Samantha Hardison are not happy about that call. First team foul. Shooting now was Faith Bland. Falls off for Bland on the season. She shoots it at 50%. She's one for two from the line prior to this trip. Now two for four on the day. Looking to shoot. Now Hunter on the baseline, blocked off by Gardner. And Claudia Garrido. Garrido with that amazing shake. And she knocks it down for the mid range. She has seven. Gardner too strong. And Hardison putting her body on the line, could not keep it in. But Claudia Garrido, the daughter of a coach, and this, I think, probably be happy with this move. Oh, yeah. Little floater <laughs> for two. Coming up after the game, it's the HBCU Go Sports Crossover Show. Then our college basketball coverage continues later. Today on the men's side, the undefeated Carson Atlanta Panthers take on their Spring Hill College at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. And men's teams and the Clark Atlanta men's teams are here. This is 
Trinity Jones finds Adriana Gardner looking for her sixth points of the second half and finds them. Adriana Gardner, just a freshman from Spanaway, Washington, but playing beyond her years. Gardner's finding her groove. That was a tough shot made by her getting into the paint and getting physical. Eight points on the day for Gardner after a quiet first half. Coach said she needed to be bigger here in the second half. Marcia Duda is fouled down low. She's been big all game. And now for more, Cy Alexander. Yes, coming out of that last huddle, Coach Bailey felt like if they keep the pressure up, Spring Hill will break. So that was his big emphasis in that last huddle to continue to press full court. And again, I know he does not like the fact they are allowing Duda to get the ball on the inside, and now she's at the free throw line. Yes, yeah, Sai, you talked about that coming out of the halftime break, how they felt Marta was doing a good job of finding space down low, and that's where she operated at a high clip. And they pushed her out early on in this third quarter, but Nia, uh, she still found a way to be successful. Absolutely. Again, she's a very disciplined and sound player. She knows how to use her body and use it to her advantage to get the ball. This is DeAsia Reed. <laughs> when she came in in the first half, she got busy quick, and she clocked in for another bucket. Again, Reed is one of those players that's been able to read the floor and see who all is out there. And of course, she is using her size advantage over Duda and being able to use her depth to get inside and knock down the layup. Another basket there for Spring Hill. Again. Think about what this game has been. So many lead changes. Reed is called for the offensive foul as Duda stepped in. Yes, Reed is just obviously being aggressive. She looks, she scours, she says, oh, let me drop that shoulder. And uh, of course, that's going to go the other way. But Reed has been very, very aggressive down low. Second foul on DeAsia Reed, fourth on the team. Spring Hill with the three point lead. Hunter attacks the basket, and the floater falls for Kellen Hunter. She now has nine points, looking for double figures. Yeah, Kellen Hunter has been this true freshman for the Badgers. She's the floor general. She's getting it done on both ends of the floor. Check that. Kellen Hunter with 11 points, so she's in double figures. And that's how quietly she scored her points. She's not very loud, not very brash, but the ball finds the bottom. She just runs this offense at a high level. Absolutely. And, you know, she's not a selfish point guard. She's able to get her team involved. She's able to, of course, you know, scour the defense and find those open pockets, as you can see, and she lays it in and gets that teardrop, and she helps us back on defense, and she does it again. 11 points, five rebounds, five assists, and three steals. She's filling up the stat sheet as a freshman. And the coach joked that she might even be a better soccer player than she is basketball player. The coach here at Spring Hill is trying to get her to play soccer. <laughs> and Coach Pressel is like, no, she has practice. She can juggle the basketball right. put in practice, but that's the only that's thing that she's going to be that's doing. That's it, that's it. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to see that for myself after the game. Kellen Hunter, if you are re-watching this game, you want to see what she can do on the soccer field as well. More than 50 goals and 20 assists for Faith Academy when she was a varsity player. And again, you know, Panthers, it's just, you want to be able to get good sound shots, and that just is not the best shot. Tiana Smith showcasing her three-point shooting ability, and another assist from Kellen Hunter. Running the break again, Burrito leaves it short, Duda over the top, can't grab it, and Burrito is out of bounds. And of course, Kellen Hunter seeing Tiana Smith down in the corner. Smith knocks it down. Every single time the Badgers have been able to capitalize off of the Panthers' defensive and offensive breakdown. Evans with some space, a little jump stop, and banks it in. Oriana Evans, her first points of the second half. She has to get cooking if Clark is going to come back. 
Absolutely. She kind of second guessed that shot, but she put the ball down and got in for that close mid range jumper. Green Hill College has just one win on the year. And thinking about this team, Coach Bailey said, just because they have that one win doesn't mean that they're not a good team. We cannot underestimate them, and they've showcased their ability all day. Absolutely. And, you know, Coach also shared with us, you know, Clayton State, when they came into that matchup, they were 0-6, James. And obviously Clark Atlanta came in and said, hey, we're just 0 you know, we're about to be this 0-6 team. And, of course, they lost 70-78. So cannot underestimate this new and improved Spring Hill College squad. Hunter goes one for two from the line, 12 points on the day. Janai Ellis is back in. McKinley races towards. <laughs> Maybe made it more difficult than it needed to be, but what a sexy pass. <laughs> Very quick. Major look pass. Clark Atlanta doing that trap that they love to do. Looks like it went off her foot, but off of Clark Atlanta. Here it is again. Who was it off of? Looks like it went off Hunter, but it will be an extra chance now for Clark Atlanta. And now the ball is out. Spring Hill in possession. Lead is five for the Badgers. But again, Clark Atlanta is not going away. Hunter stopped off by McKinley. Florida shoots. Hunter looks up, lets it fly. She's blocked. And that'll be a shot clock violation. And Hunter was looking for that call on that contact. And she was going up for the shot, but unfortunately, she didn't get that call going her way. McKinley with 12. Now to Ellis. Comes to a complete stop. She's fouled. She's been dealing with some shin splints, and so the lift not necessarily there like she would like, but doing her best, and that just shows how gritty she is. She's at the line for two. For sure. That was a great decision by her as she drove down the baseline, did that jump stop, pump fake, and of course went up and threw the foul. Coach Bailey wasn't sure how they were going to use Janiah Ellis. Obviously dealing with those shin splint injuries. She came in from Troy University. Had to get surgery immediately. And Coach said, I don't know. We may have to sideline her for the rest of the season. But it's good to see her back. And of course, still pushing through. Won a Sunbelt Championship with Troy. And there's a lot of good things on that team. She started some games, played every game in the season. And so just coming here was looking forward to having an opportunity and a trooper. Shot clock and game clock differ by 10 seconds. Ball goes to Duda, but it's blocked away by Evans. Now, four on two. McKinley takes it herself, can't score it. Ball tips around. Garrido out to Hunter. Evans blocks it away. Evans said, not in my house. But a little bit too much cheering. It was good chase down by Evans. She said, get it out of here. But unfortunately, she may have just gotten a tech. A little bit too much celebration, too much talking. And then she bumps into Hunter. That is not okay. You know there's emotion. You know there's excitement. For sure. For but, sure. But at what point is it a little too much? Correct. And it's tough, yeah. especially after a great defensive play. So Absolutely. Duda. And, and not to mention, this Panthers team needs Coriana Evans. And you don't want to do anything to get yourself out of the game early. Marta Duda, now with a career 
that high. Evans with the personal credit as well as a technical. So not only is it just a technical foul, but it counts as a personal foul. And it's just her first of the day. You know, Evans right now sits number 12 in the league for block shots. And as you can see, she's been swatting left and right at those balls. Hunter can't score it shooting late, but it's been Marta Duda's day. 19 for her. Time for the fourth quarter between Spring Hill College and Clark Atlanta University. And Nia, it's been a freshman takeover here in Mobile. Oh, yeah. Adriana Gardner has been incredible for the Panthers, obviously. As you can see, she is able to read the floor, and she's not afraid to get inside of the paint, Jane. And, of course, for the Spring Hill Badgers, Kellen Hunter, the true freshman for this team. She's quick, she's shifty, and she's going to get down on the other end. And she's also going to get her team involved. And, of course, she can knock down that shot. Ellen Hunter filling up the stat sheet. She has 12 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds, 4 steals. And on the flip side for Adriana Gardner, she has the 8 points on the day. And Gardner actually said she wanted to come and play at Clark Atlanta. She talked to Coach Bailey. She recruited them. Coach Bailey did not recruit her all the way from Spanaway, Washington. Came down, played, and when Coach Bailey and the staff saw this, oh, yeah, you can definitely come play with us. Oh, yeah. She came to tryouts, and Coach said she has been a pleasant surprise for the Panthers. Sometimes players got to be proactive. If you want to get somewhere, go out and get it. Clark Atlanta right out of the shoot goes out and gets this steal. They're down by six. Oriana Evans had just two points in that third quarter. Has to get going if Clark Atlanta is going to come back. Leading scorer on this team. Oriana Garner mentioned had six points of her own in that quarter. You know, Trinity Jones, she does well trying to get inside the paint, but sometimes she just has to gain a little control and have her head up and be able to dish the ball out to her team. Can't steal the basketball, but doesn't give up. Oriana Evans forcing back-to-back -back turnovers by Spring Hill College. And that's what Coach Bailey said. If we can continue to play at a high level defensively, we can stay in and hopefully beat this Spring Hill College team. Tiana Smith showcasing some defense herself. Has two blocks in the game. That's her first steal. And I know Evans is a little under the weather. She just seems a bit out of tune right now, so hopefully she can pick things up. Duda trying to continue her career. Day 21 points for Marta Duda. Duda knew she had that mixed match, and she used it to her advantage. That up and under is a killer played by her. Average just 1.7 points last year at Arkansas Tech. She's been in double figures in every single game this season. Stein, the four to shoot, finds Gardner. Yes, double figures now for Adriana Gardner. Gardner getting it done, stepping it up for her entire team. Ellen Hunter finds some space and puts it in. She now has 14. She created that space, retreated, knocked down the mid-range jumper. That is what you can expect from this freshman year for the Spring Hill Badgers. Nice idea from Ellis, but Evans couldn't grab it. Now a side. Spring Hill 
Green Hill is executing exactly what the coaches asked them to do in the timeout for round one, looking to post Marta Duda. We're going to get a heavy dose of that. Marta Duda, the leading scorer on this team, top 10 in the SIAC. And she has been everything advertised and even better, having her best game of the season. The bright lights on. Alicia Mann, wonderfully done. Oh man, that was a tough shot by her. She drove in over two Clark Atlanta. Big. Wonderful cut by Gardner. Takes the contact, scores. Oh, and that was an excellent sequence. Reed seeing, I don't have any room to make that shot, but she was unselfish. She cut down and, of course, got that extra point to count it. Garner has been incredible for the Panthers this season, this, this afternoon. Excuse me. Tiana Smith, her second foul, team's first here in the fourth quarter. And for De'Asia Reed, the last time she was down there in the post, she picked up that offensive foul. This time surveyed the defense Absolutely. and found somebody open. Absolutely. Gardner misses the but Reed grabs the offensive rebound. Can't score it the first time. Gets it again. Goes up again. No. Jakia Brunson and Claudia Garrido fighting for the ball. And it's a jump. Possession arrow stays here with Clark. And Reed has been on the side of the paint for the Panthers. Of course, Jakia Brunson was trying to get that rebound, but Garrido said, no, let me get that back from you. Garner with position. And Gardner scores again. Atriana Gardner, true freshman for the Panthers. She has stepped up big for a lot of the key players who may have had a slow start to this game. And Nicole Blanche throws it away. Gardner doing everything. And Brooklyn McKinley is called for the loose ball foul. Kenny was not happy, and neither was Coach Bailey happy about that call. That's McKinley's third, team's first in the fourth. We just had a scrappy loose ball, a feisty loose ball foul. If you didn't think that the energy would ratchet up here in the fourth, then you would be missing out. <laughs> it's been a very physical game for both teams. They're both super scrappy. Everybody's down there crashing the boards trying to get those rebounds. Burrito throws it away. McKinley misses on the layup attempt. And a bullet dodged. Kelly did a great job reading that pass. But again, as my coach was saying, have that million dollars, million dollar play, but a 10 cent finish. shoot for Jaleesha Mann. Does she see it? Garrido does. Can't get it up. And the defense again dials up a notch for Clark Atlanta. Back on the ball. Because now they have to score. Adriana Garner has all six points for the Panthers in this fourth quarter. Ellis is going to come up for Clark. De'Asia Reed, too heavy on the attempt. And the shot goes over the rim. Now Hunter working out. Gets it back. Another late shot clock. The rebound now two on one. Brunson blocked off by Garrido, then blocked at the summit. So we'll take a break. Neither team really having the ability to score here in this fourth. And we'll take a break. Be back for more of the fourth quarter.
Clark Atlanta still close down to Spring Hill right now. Adriana Gardner has been the lifeblood for this team here in the second half. Yeah, James, she's been picking up the slack. Obviously, we know that Coriana Evans is a little under the weather. But, of course, as a true freshman, you're going to step up when your number is called. And Brooklyn McKinley, who's a freshman as well, went to Lake Ridge High School in Mansfield. She has had a career day for Clark. And so when your top player who leads the team in scoring, maybe not having their best game, have to have somebody show up, and both Gardner and McKinley have. Of course, of course, when your number is called, make sure you take advantage of the opportunity. Russell McKinley has done that on both ends of the court. Back to back blocks by Marta Duda on McKinley. And Spring Hill College back in possession, leading by six. One and one in conference are the Badgers looking for their second win of the season. Felicia Mann almost throws it away and does. Shakia Brunson. Banks it in. It's a four-point game. That was a great, great play by Jakia Brunson. Staying up and staying active in that full-court man press. Pressure is broken for a moment. Helen Hunter is not on the floor right now. And another possession goes awry. And just as I say that, who's getting up off the bench? You no, know Kellen Hunter's got to come in, of course. You know, Coach talks with us about those turnovers that he was not happy about during their last game. And that was an unforced turnover by those Spring Hill Badgers. Mark Atlanta is plus 17 when it comes to points off turnovers. Have 23 on the day. Now Atriana Gardner comes to a complete stop. After Trinity Jones goes to the spin herself. Yes! Right at the rim. Trinity Jones makes this a two-point game. Kennedy Jones stepping up. That spin cycle was beautiful. Now Clark Atlanta has put that pressure on Spring Hill's offense. Hunter doing the dirty work by herself. Forces the foul, but again, Clark finding a way. Trinity Jones spin cycle. Let me get in and get that in. Trinity Jones, she's not afraid to get inside of the paint. And of course, either draw a foul, foul or make the layup. She hasn't had much success during the first half, but she stepped it up. Um, and that's Trinity Jones. And the foul goes on Faith Land. Four teams. Second. Kellen Hunter now has 15 points after that made free throw. Two for two from the line. Hunter with 16 to go along with seven rebounds and six assists. She's been everything, along with Marta Duda, on offense. Jones again. Bully ball down low. Back-to-back -back buckets for Trinity Jones. Trinity Jones, that was a great, great play by her. Using her depth, using her, her speed. Get in and make that layup. Under four minutes to play. Execution, the name of the game now. Hunter around the Duda screen. She throws it away. But she gets it back. Kellen Hunter. Wow. You know, James, one thing that Coach Preble has said to us is, you know, it's about how you respond to those mistakes. It's about how you respond to those mistakes. And that was a perfect example of Kellen Hunter. She turned over the ball, and she got back on defense, and she stole the ball back, and of course, laid it in. 18 points for Kellen Hunter. Her fifth steal, and that's after a turnover. A freshman handling business at home. Mia, when you're a freshman, sometimes you have to find your place, find your space in a game. But this freshman in Kellen Hunter, she has not only found her space, she's been the space. She's taken up all the space. She's played at such a high level. She is taking up all the space, and she's been incredible for this Badgers team. Obviously, this is a new culture, new team, and coach has said she's known, he has known Hunter since she was just an adolescent. At her time when she was at South of Alabama, she would come to the, the camps and be involved, and Obviously, their relationship has grown, and she's here playing under Coach Brussels today.
Might have learned a thing or two at those South Alabama camps from Coach Dan Pressel. And it's showing up right now in this clutch situation. Clark Atlanta down by four, in possession on the road. McKinley thought about the three. Out to Stein. She doesn't take it. Four to shoot. Now McKinley will shoot the three. Yes, ma'am! Third three of the day for Brooklyn McKinley. She has 15. And that is how you do it, Brooklyn McKinley. But then they're back again. Oh, my goodness. Clark Atlanta then steals the ball away. McKinley will shoot two. Have yourself a day. Brooklyn McKinney, Denise Stein, that was a great look by her. Of course, McKinley is ready to knock it down. Again, coming up, stepping up to the plate, Brooklyn McKinney has done that. Brooklyn McKinley now at the free throw line to give Clark the lead. Leaves the first short on the season. McKinley shoots it at just 57%. and we're tied at 72. And now, James, this is going to boil down to who is the most disciplined and who wants this game more? Who is going to run their sets and stay focused? Strap yourselves in and come back with us for the final 205. We're not up at 72. We're tied. 72 apiece and Brooklyn McKinley handling business for Clark. She has stepped up big for the Panthers today. This is what coach means. Sometimes your star players aren't see there. When your number is called, step up and be ready to show. And Brooklyn McKinley has done that. Brooklyn McKinley. Spun that down for a bucket. Zai has more from that last Spring Hill huddle. Yes, in that last Spring Hill huddle, they wanted to do exactly what they just did, a high screen and roll action to see if we could get the basketball to the rim, which they did an extra job. Got, got Dorito at the free throw line. Excellent call by Coach Pressel. percent free throw shooter first one is good for the reader daughter of a coach in Spain and how many practice sessions do you think ended with free throws oh I'm sure plenty probably couldn't leave the gym until she scored maybe a hundred at, at most at least I'm sorry at least Two-point lead for Spring Hill College on top of Clark Atlanta. Looking for just their second win of the season for the Badgers. Reed again. Her 10th point. She goes into double figures, and we're tied again. Due to try to sell that to hopefully get a charge call, but it just wasn't happening. Kellen Hunter too strong on the floater. Clark Atlanta coming the other way. Trinity Jones throws it away. And again, I said this earlier, Jones is just a little out of control. She's got to get a bit control with the ball. Be able to have her head up when she's dribbling so she can see who all is open. Jaleesha Mann was wide open but could not rip the cords. We go under a minute in a tie ball game. Here in Mobile. Clark just needs to set up, run their sets. Don't rush any shots and don't force any shots. The shot rolls off for DeAsia Reed, who has not been shy shooting today. Kellen Hunter brings it across midcourt. Man. 
finds Duda. She's been quiet here in this fourth. Leaves it for Smith. And the hometown roll falls for the home team. Again, this Badgers team, they are a very unselfish team. They know how to make the extra pass and be able to get each other involved. Duda said, nope, I don't have any room there. Let me kick it out to my buddy Tiana Smith. And she knocks down that mid-range to take the lead. Tiana Smith from Daphne, Alabama. Not too far away from right here at Spring Hill College. And for Smith, former all-county player, and her head coach in high school said that she came to her once upon a time when she wasn't the best player and said, Coach, I want to play college basketball. And her coach told her that this is what you need to do whether it was her shooting, her scoring, her defense. She said she was very resilient, and that's what it takes to hit a big-time shot in a late-clock situation. Absolutely, James. And it's about knowing your role. I think Tiana Smith has found her role on this squad, and she does it well. And she does it with a lot of confidence. Clark Atlanta defensively has allowed Spring Hill College to shoot their best field goal percentage of the season. Coming into today, the Badgers shot on average at about 30%. They've doubled that. They're shooting 60% from the field. And when you're shooting that high, those shots look that good. It's a very difficult recipe to win if you're allowing them. Again, they're taking their time on offense. They're playing unselfish basketball. They're remaining disciplined. They're running their sets all the way through until they're able to get the best shot. Think about Marta Duda on the day. She had 21. And now Cy Alexander has more on what Clark needs to do in this late situation. Coming out of the last Clark Atlanta huddle, Coach Bailey really wants to get the ball inside. No jump shots. Look for Evans to get the basketball. They want to attack. No jump shots. Shot clock turned off. A chance to tie with a two, win with a three for Clark Atlanta. Jones attacks. And that's an offensive foul. Extended the arm, and who else would make the play but Kellen Hunter on defense? Yep, yep. And of course, Trinity Jones, she drives in, and she sticks that elbow out and pushes Hunter. That will cost you. The third foul on Jones, 14 foul. And here's Coach Bailey's reaction to the foul call. As you can see, not happy about it. Yeah. But situation now for Clark. They have 14 fouls. They're going to foul again. Put Spring Hill at the line. 12.5 to play. Game is still not over. It's not over. It's far from over. We have too much time. Of course, they say the game is not over until the fat lady sings. Spring Hill College has struggled to get the ball in at time versus Clark. And the tough part about it now is you're in that friend zone. You don't want to defend for too long and run out of time, but you do want to try to defend and get a turnover. So what does it look like here for you if you were in the coach's seat? <laughs> if I was in the coach's seat, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I take care of this ball, right? And I'm going to make sure I get the best pass and make sure that I'm looking at my team. And obviously, as you can see, Clark Atlanta did that foul, and now Kellen Hunter is going to the line, and she's an excellent free throw shooter. 80% on the season, and Hunter has a chance to ice this game right now. First free throw falls for Hunter, 19 points on the day. It's now four five from the line to finish things up right now. Misses. Eight and a half to play. McKinley looking up. Three. And Coach Bailey 
is upset because his team had a timeout and could have called it immediately to advance the ball. And that's what he's discussing with the officials. Yeah, again, you want to get that timeout so you're able to advance the ball and, of course, throw out the best play you can to uh, obviously tie this game up. So, and six seconds is a big difference. And that, again, the execution, it's always tough, especially at this point of the game, but it defines a game, and especially now. Absolutely. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, Coach Bailey, he's, he's drawing up the best play to see who is that player. And, honestly, if it was up to me, James, getting that ball to Brooklyn McKinney. McKinley, she has been on fire right here. So we can see here Coach Bailey calling for the timeout right before they make the catch. And he's still looking. And then the timeout is called, so he does have a gripe with the officials, but at this point in time, all he can do is watch his team try to execute this play down by three with 2.5 seconds left in the fourth. Ball tipped away. Clark can't grab it cleanly. And Spring Hill College.